Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Chemda, I heard your latest show, Philosophically Speaking. And by the way, I can't think of a smoother title that rolls off the tongue. <laughs> I, I think he just did this so I talk about it, right? I did it so I, learn, so I learn how to spell philosophically. Chemda and Mike Kaplan, they're recording a new show together. It's what I just said it is. <laughs> it's available under Flavor of the Month. It's in your VIP membership. If you go to keithandthegirl.com slash app, you can see it right there on your front page. This uh, latest episode, uh, she called, Why Would You Say That To Me? Here's the description. <laughs> is it true that nothing other people do is because of you? Is it possible to not take insults and slights personally? Mike Kaplan joins Hemda again, and they talk about their own responses and emotions to people's comments and actions. Let us know what you thought of this episode. Don't worry about being critical. That's just the way you are. <laughs> I'm into it. I just I just laughed at my own joke. I was like, oh, that's clever. <laughs> uh, Essential Notions writes on Reddit. Love this series. It's been fun to listen to the two of you chat. This is the third episode in that series. Rod from our wrap up show. The show makes me feel like I'm high. He says. <laughs> I think that's good. Our buddy Newsy says that he's going to have uh, a review on Q and A in your VIP package. <laughs> OK, so follow this. Get your Keith and the Girl VIP membership today. Listen to Hemda's new show. Then listen to Newsy review it on his show. Then listen to Rod and Karen review his episode. How about that? <laughs> We're all critiquing each other's episodes. But the way I'm learning, Hemda and Mike uh, won't take it personal. They were understood not to. Again, find Hemda's new show in your VIP package under KeithandTheGirl.com slash VIP. You'll be looking under the section flavor of the month. Okay. Yeah, that actually has been a little bit confusing because it's called Philosophically Speaking, but it's under flavor of the month under the app and under KeithandTheGirl.com slash VIP. So thanks for listening. Yeah, I love flavor of the month. It's been going on for a while and people will do uh, shows that are only like a month long, different hosts, different guests, all this kind of thing. Every time we've done it, it's still available in your VIP package. Uh, I'm here to report. I just got my second shot, the second uh, Pfizer COVID vaccine shot. Uh, we didn't uh, have a guest today because uh, we weren't sure how it's going to react. I'm doing all right. Just tired. The arms a little less sore than it was after the uh, first shot. See, this is um, when you say you're tired. I'm like, oh, good. You're not really having any side effects because right. um, I'm going to say something obnoxious. It's funny that everyone's when they don't have the other terrible symptoms. I'm just tired. And I'm like, wow, I wonder how many of us are just actually tired. And then <laughs> we're like, oh, yeah, I just took a five hour nap. But like, you know, the shot. And I'm like. Maybe you needed a five hour nap also. Of I course, see. that's not scientific and I'm joking. But how many of us do actually need a nap? Well, I just took a five hour energy and it's not doing anything. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that feels good. And afterwards, I went and saw Brother Love. He was uh, in town for a hot minute, him and his wife. Oh, shit. Both fully vaccinated. And then uh, his parents or his, uh, you know, his dad and stepmom uh, visit us uh, uh, as well. That's nice. Wow. Was it emotional to see other people? It's weird. It's yeah. weird because even though obviously we've been doing Keith and the girl, the whole quarantine to be in, per you're, you're almost relearning how to converse. I imagine. Yeah, it's weird it, because now, you know, with Zoom, I see everybody or they feel like I'm looking at them. But in person, you got to remember, yes, I'm mm. telling brother love a story, but you still have to look over and acknowledge the wife here and again. And I don't know. It's just it's it's been a year since I since I talked to multiple people like that. Wow. Were you exhausted after? No, it's just it's strange. And I think everybody felt strange. They haven't been uh, seeing people either necessarily. Once in a blue moon, they would play a socially distant show, but they're, they, they're not really hanging out. Were there any actual like notable awkward moments where you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You know what? I was I was telling a story and then I'm thinking of like, do I want to take the story this way or this way? And, every, you know, then everything just went blank. <laughs> Almost like when a stand up is uh, too much in their head and you see them stuttering on stage instead of them just focusing on their act. And that that's what was happening. I'm like, I, I don't know what's in this uh, Coca-Cola. I uh, let me start over. OK. Hi, I'm I, Keith. 
And usually you could just, you know, when that happens, you sort of tend to freeze with your body language and then you could just exit out. And it's like, oh, he must have frozen and lost connection, not lost complete track of what he was saying. Like usually in Zoom, you could do that. But in person, you're just like, where's my exit? I acted like I was under the table fixing the Wi-Fi. (laughs) And then I finished my story. Uh, But yeah, you know, I think subconsciously, maybe I was dying to talk to people so much that after I said I went to uh, Mother's Day brunch with uh, with Kyle, but I didn't say this, that afterwards we're going out for a stroll. It's me, uh, her uh, her oldest son. And her, of course, and we're walking by a bike lane, but we're not in the bike lanes way. OK, this guy comes by ding dang. And then I look up. He's not even close to me. There would have been no problems at all. And he he flips me off with his right hand, gives the middle <laughs> finger. You know, I was cool with this guy until then, because sometimes I'm just like, I'm just going to let you know I'm coming. Now we're all aware and now sure. no mistakes will be made. But the finger, it says a, a story. I know I wasn't in his way. Uh, he he could he could have been doing uh, bike tricks. He would have been just fine. And to flip me and my family off means you must be flipping off. You must be going all day flipping off people. Yeah. Right. Historical hysterical. We brought up that day. (laughs) Yeah. It's like then this guy has bigger problems and he's flipping off everybody. How is a bike ride relaxing to him? (laughs) And. It must have been because they were with me. You would think it'd be the opposite. I'm not saying I'm proud of this. I yelled. I saw that. (laughs) What? That's what you yelled. (laughs) Then he gave the middle finger up higher and I go, you heard me. Well, of course he heard me. That's why he flipped me off again. But I was a tough guy and I was I was ready for him. Like you're thinking, what if he stops the bike and comes back? It's hard to tell sizes on bikes, but he was about my size. I was ready because subconsciously, I think I knew and I shouldn't have done it because I was with them, but because my girlfriend and her son were there, I knew I wouldn't let him beat me up. OK, I'm very happy for you that I'm not stood, stood up for yourself, but no, it's not disgusting. That was the corniest standing up for yourself. Right. That was the most old man. Get off my lawn. I <laughs> like, saw that. You said nothing. You said, I'm going to turn this car around. Right. But what could I say? Right. Like a <laughs> nothing, s- nothing. Right. So that's this is all I got. <laughs> not nice. Exactly. I'm not, not. <laughs> you're going to regret that because right. I know you're doing it because of you. OK. And not because of me. And I and I'm not I don't walk around the city getting into fights. You know, you see everybody bumps each other like a pinball game. I see somebody get upset at that. I'm like, then then get out of the fucking city. This is this is what happens. Right. Uh, who who's that woman that was just on uh, Netflix? Uh, who? OK, <laughs> it called uh, it, it's all it's uh, pretend it's a city with uh, Scorsese. Oh. Yes. OK, we all know. Yes. And by uh, the way, everyone Lieb- should Fran Lebowitz. Yes. Oh, OK, move. I... Fran. You're the one having a tr- trouble here. <laughs> you move. Of course, of course, people are bumping into each other. So my point is, it, it's just it's out of character that this happened. And I think it was because uh, it, I don't maybe because it was so passive aggressive. Like if he what ran into me, do? I would have been less upset. What would you normally do? If, if I wasn't around my family? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say. Hmm. But I just knew that if he did turn around, I would have to knock him out. So like because you're, family's there you're and I would tell him that. And I pictured telling him that like, hey, I just want to warn you. They're watching. So I will fucking kill you. See, now, this is two seconds long, but I thought all that. This is why the show Hulk was invented, because everyone could relate to this. Yeah. Like you, f- you felt yourself hulking up, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think like, you know, smaller people than you do. I've done it where I I'm like, what am I even talking about that? I think that I can do anything about anything. I need to keep quiet. But yeah, you just kind of like every once in a while. I I don't do it anymore. And uh, 
uh, not driving helped. And now I now when I drive, I'm way more like you can get in front of me and I don't care. We're all getting there at the same time. I promise you everything's right. cool. He comes uh, he th- comes back and I go, sorry, I just really wanted to talk to a stranger. <laughs> yes, it's been too long. <laughs> Excuse me. I just got vaccine. So I got a little brazen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other day we were riding our bicycles, me and Xerxes and um, and you flipped off this dude. No, no. All of a sudden, I'm like, "Mm, he's not exactly behind me. And I see him talking to one of the bikers that just ran through the crowd like it's walking traffic. And then uh, and and they're actual bikes like uh, motorcycles and they're running through with that. And it's just really Mm -hmm. upsetting. And one of them crashed into Xerxes bicycle. A motorcycle, a motorcycle, a four wheeler. They have everything during these runs. Exactly. Yeah. Like a troop, a whole, you know, group of people. And one of them smashed into Xerxes. And I didn't know that. But all I could see from a distance is he's talking to one of the people on the motorcycles. And I'm like, I don't think this is a reunion of, oh, hey, buddy, I haven't seen you in a while. So I'm like, fuck, because their tone on the motorcycles, it had a tone. You know, they're sure they're where they're not supposed to be. And like they don't the run in lights and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They close off streets so that they can, you know, do their tricks and stuff. And now they're in a pedestrian area on their motorcycles riding through. Right. And so, by the um, way, you say they close off streets. The government doesn't close off streets. Right. Yeah. No, they just stand there and yeah. go. You have to go the other way and right. go the other way. <laughs> right. Yeah, basically. So I'm seeing him talk to this person. I'm like, I don't think he knows any of these motorcycle people. So this can't be good. I get close. I see his front wheel is completely bent and and like mm. can't use the bike anymore. And I'm like, fuck, you know, as a female in this situation, I can't help but be like, will my presence be more agitating? You know, will like mm-hmm. amp up the situation for no reason. Or will I like sometimes you you squash it because it's like, oh, you kind of realize with the third person there, we need to just stop. So I'm hearing words like you ran into me and it's like, yeah, we both fucked up. And it's like, (laughs) wait, what? (laughs) And just kind of like, like very dismissive responses. And I when I got closer, they just kind of uh, stopped. And then he went to meet his motorcycle people and we just walked away. Of but, course. Oh, I, I wouldn't say I saw that in that scenario. No, not. I yeah. saw that. Not I any- say I didn't see nothing. I go, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> Everybody saw it because there's so many pedestrians. Well, sure. But, you know, I, I wonder I don't think I should, but like part of you wonders if you should be like, oh, my God, that's going to cost us like at least two hundred dollars. And then maybe that person is just defeated and ha- happens to hand you two hundred dollars or they go, yeah, come see me. I'll be over there. I'll get you your two hundred dollars. Right. And they point to like all their friends with their motorcycles. Right. And uh, I like what we opted for. Sure. Your hospital bill is going to be two thousand right. yeah, dollars. Just right. let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it go. I did realize I, I was wondering what's a classy way to ask people that you meet to prove that they got both vaccine shots. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. When I got my second shot, they told me about an app called Excelsior for New York State. And uh, you download it and you're supposed to download it so that you can prove that you got the vaccine. Maybe we'll need it for airplanes, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I also saw there's a scanner. So you're the one on the other side. So now do you see what I mean? So you would open on your phone, your, your QR code. I scan it on my phone and it Mm -hmm. says, yes, this person indeed has the vaccine. Okay. And and I think this can easily be done by going, look what I I got a fucking scanner. I'm the president. Let me see your thing. Let me see if this works. Okay, now you let me see if it works on yours. So there (laughs) is there is a way to do it. I've realized I see to play dumb. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these idiots saying, you know, I don't want to get the vaccine. You just got to tell them, like, if you get it, we don't have to give it to those fucking foreigners. You know, you'll get something they don't get. And they're like, all right, I'll get it. You know, they'll be very <laughs> excited. So we'll see. Uh, I heard about two candidates running for mayor in New York City, Sean Donovan and Ray McGuire. They were asked by the New York Times editorial uh, editorial board 
to uh, name the median sales price of a home in Brooklyn. Mm. How much does a house cost in Brooklyn? Uh, Donovan said in Brooklyn, huh? Wait, wait, wait. A home. But yes. what's a home? It could be a studio apartment. It could be a three bedroom. Just of all the places you I can guess live, of I all guess? the places. What's the average? OK, median. Uh, do you have a number in your head? I know the answer. Oh, OK. Can I guess? Yep. Um, Four hundred thousand dollars. All right. Donovan said in Brooklyn, huh? I don't know for sure. OK, first of all. I, we'll go to Queens then. <laughs> Oh, Brooklyn. <laughs> I don't know that one for sure. Uh, he served as the housing secretary under President Obama. Uh, he said, I would guess it's around one hundred thousand dollars. It's nine hundred thousand dollars. OK. You what? should have a clue, right? McGuire, a former executive at Citigroup. You, wait, you should have a clue that you will find nothing for one hundred thousand dollars here. Right. You should right. like you will find Nothing. You might find something under foreclosure if you knew about it ahead of time, if like you're at the auction and 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 you can take chances like that. Uh, Ray McGuire says it's got to be somewhere in the eighty thousand to ninety thousand dollar range, if not higher. You could say if not higher, uh, uh, one dollar, <laughs> if not more. If not higher. Oh, my God. Donovan later claimed that he misinterpreted the question. Oh, yeah. I thought you said <laughs> what's not the cost. You would say you want the cost nine hundred thousand, I'd say nine, nine hundred twenty thousand, maybe. Oh, did you say median? I saw, I thought you said grande. Right. So uh, McGuire, who got it uh, wrong a little more, said admitted that uh, he messed up. By the way, neither one of them got it wrong more. That is right. all a stupid price. You right. are all in the same field of nothing. That's that's dumb. Right. I, I'm telling you, the only mayor test I would have is that I, I need you to I need to see you work one of those uh, MTA kiosks where you get your <laughs> MTA card for the subway. <laughs> I for how long? For how long do you think that's two weeks? Right. You say two weeks. I will week. allow you two weeks to figure out how to put your credit card in, take it out, type in your number, value or time and get on the subway. You have two weeks from when you start. <laughs> OK, I need to see you uh, file taxes through the New York State website. Yes. Oh, my God. I just got so excited. Yes. I need you to check on your driver's license. See if it's up to date through the website Yes, and prove it by. And then you have to prove it to the DMV. Yes, you just have to. Whatever the fuck that means. Yes. Right. Ooh, what else? Oh, my God. Now we're talking politics. Anything, anything that's supposedly, you know, supposed to be simpler for our lives. You have to do it. If you go to what is it? IRS.gov. I it if it wasn't dot gov, I look at the fucking browser every time I go there. If it wasn't dot gov, I'd be like, this is a phishing hacking, whatever yeah. you want to call it. this site is so wrong. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I truly truly believe that a 12 year old can build a better thing. And I understand that it has to be the most secure. And I'm sorry, but regular companies are making their system secure. This is stupid. You have to make it look stupid to be secure. Right. And, and where's you my shit? Where's the button that says, where's my shit? Right. And they always tell you uh, you have to check on this department. They don't give you a link to it. And if you happen to find it, that, of course, isn't the answer either. I want to see a, a candidate go through that. Yes. You know what? Every link on IRS.gov is mm. it's a link to IRS.gov. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it just it just loops you back yeah. and goes, it's on this fucking page. Now find it like you found Waldo. Right. <laughs> well, we never found either. That's the thing. Ellen DeGeneres has announced today she will end her talk show after 18 seasons. More than 3000 episodes. She says it's not a challenge anymore. That's really? it's that's when I saw that quote and I'm like, uh, I want to be I don't know if I want to be on your side, but I want to not read something into this like as an artist. But that is the most obnoxious thing that you can say. <laughs> it really is. Right. It really is like you, you're not challenged by all the 
why don't you then you haven't been in the office in a while, right? right? Because imagine like everyone who works in the background, like what the fuck is not a challenge about this? It's right. a TV show. Also, you're trending every other month for uh, your your producers sexually harassing people. You being a bitch to everybody in the office. Isn't that a challenge? Yeah. Or, or, yeah. or are you thinking, ah, I would think, what dance do I do going into commercial? Now I just dance. It's really too easy. Also, if it's not a challenge, do a challenging episode. Right. I don't She's, change your whole fucking ch- I do find a new question. Oh, no one's interesting to you anymore. What you do is you interview people. So if it's not a challenge, that means all of us are boring. Uh, this comes as ratings have plummeted after several former and current employees accused of her uh, accused her of fostering a toxic work environment. But she says none of that has anything to do with it. Well, that's offensive, too. Does that have anything to do with you quitting? Nah, not a single fucking thing. Oh, why are you quitting? Ah, not a challenge. That's funny because while ratings are plummeting, there's a challenge. Yeah, but plummeting. You know your challenge is keeping other people's jobs. Is that a challenge? I'm too good at it, but your yeah. ratings are going down. Nothing to do with that. It's just too easy. <laughs> okay, too easy. Like you're, you're sponsors of hers and you're like, can you too easy it back up? <laughs> it's so funny because if it's too easy, then start doing anything you want, you know, right. like have vanilla ice on for no reason. Right. That's I'm just being goofy, like be goofy for a whole year yeah. where everyone's scratching their head going like, why am I watching this? And then it's like, oh, guess I'm canceled. She said she wants to go into acting. Start doing start doing uh, acting on your show. Uh, by the way, if you're Ellen and you want to go into acting, you know, like everybody else, I believe fathers have told their children or mothers, whatever. I don't know what you mm-hmm. Americans do. Uh, don't quit a job before you get the next job. Right. Right. She says uh, a sitcom seems like a walk in the park compared to this 180 shows a year. I don't know if that's really what I want to do next, but movies for sure. If there were a great role, I'd be able to do that, which I'm not able to do now. So this isn't a challenge anymore. So I want to do something, a sitcom that's a walk in the park. That's so mean. <laughs> right. That's I mean, so that's mean. that shit's easy. I'll collect a couple of Emmys. Well, first of all, what happened to challenge? Never mind how mean it is to people that do sitcoms. That'll do that's I don't know, go into logging or something. You, you want a challenge when you're a creative person. You constantly need to be challenged, she says. And as great as this show is, as fun as it is, it's just not a challenge anymore. Of course, uh, her opening monologue was in September. She said, as you may have heard this summer, there were allegations of toxic work environment at our show. And then there was an investigation. I learned that when there's when when there's a toxic energy there, that means things are not challenging. Right. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility. I take responsibility for what happens at my show. And then cuts now too much, too much. (laughs) <laughs> Sexual misconduct involving uh, the show's three top producers. No challenge. OK, I, I, I saw Gwyneth Paltrow found a new way to get uh, to be out of touch. She started complaining about it. She goes, this pandemic, I'm not going to lie to you. I really broke down. I was a piece of shit. I started drinking a little bit and I ate bread. <laughs> Remember me? I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. She, she always. Oh, my God. She met her some time ago. She's at a Jay-Z Kanye West concert. And she's like, hey, it's and she writes it. It's ends in Paris. Then I go, what the fuck? Gwyneth Paltrow, who's whiter than you? Hey, I, I, that's the name of the song, idiots. Uh, she goes, you know what? In America, uh, they don't have good people. don't have good conversations at dinner in England that we have conversations about art and politics. Oh, and this candle smells like my pussy. <laughs> What? (laughs) Oh, my God. How dare you? You haven't found an American that wants to talk about art. You pompous bitch. I rewatched the ending to seven and I start clapping now. Oh, I wish I saw that movie so I could get what you just said. Well, something's in the box. And when uh, Gwyneth was coming on the scene, it wasn't good. But now that we know her, we're like, "Mm, okay. Hmm. Not too bad. What's in the bread box? What's in the box? 
Remember when she tried to live on uh, food stamps and she died on the second day? <laughs> yes, she she quit on the second day. Gave herself a B plus. <laughs> she was going to live on food stamps for a month. She lasted two days. B plus. I've learned a lot. Uh, it turns out cilantro and lemons does not push you through for a week. Just to just ignore that you thought you were going to do that. You shouldn't have announced it, but you did. Now, just nobody's going to follow up. How'd that go? <laughs> Never mind. You're dead. What are you not a liar so much? But here's a candle that's your pussy. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but there is good news. Okay. It looks like Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are back together. She just got a divorce with uh, or or excuse me, she just broke up. a uh, canceled the engagement with Alex Rodriguez. Uh, he was seen out and about uh, with his ex, Jennifer Gardner. But that's neither here nor there. It looks like they're a couple. And mm -hmm. Benifer is back. This time they're going by Benjamin, I think, to give it another chance. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is because of the pandemic. Remember, after 9-11, a bunch of people called their exes. Oh, you know who got back together because of 9-11? Who was the first couple to actually have a reality show? And then a bunch of couples. Simpsons. Yes, Jessica, Jessica Simpson. Simpson. Yes, yeah. and Nick Lachey. Uh, I never, I never liked Nick. The the show portrayed, uh, and maybe she is. I don't know her. Uh, Jessica Simpson is being stupid, and Nick just going, "Here's my stupid wife," and I'm like, "How much are you getting paid for this?" Like she thinks chicken of the sea is fucking chicken. This you fucking idiot. I'm dating, and I'm like, okay, there's your show. My wife, the idiot. Yeah, I think it's very much how couples used to be like, oh, him, he's so dumb because of this. Oh, her. She's such a bimbo. Right, I guess. But uh, not that that's an excuse. But what was they say? Oh, yeah. So they broke up and I think it was right. public and everything. And then 9-11 yeah. happened and one of them called the other. They got back together. Mm. Boom. Married. Finally had sex. Divorce. Oh, didn't <laughs> then work out. It's totally OK to have sex with other people. And then right. you have an, he tried to have another this. Oh God, I know the dumbest things. He had a reality show with his next uh, fiance. Uh, Why Lee not? Eddie. You didn't learn a lesson. Why not? <laughs> Let me try with this. Hey, guys, and I got another idiot. <laughs> Look at my face. It's so handsome. Here's another fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, yes. you remember this is my two cents, but uh, Affleck and Lopez were to, they were engaged. And then they did that movie Geely. Oh, God. Oh, oh. And then a year later, they did Jersey Girl. And that's when they broke up. And I think it has to be as simple. Wait, she was in Jersey Girl. Yeah, for a second. She dies in the beginning, I believe. Uh. I, and then the rest of the movie isn't about that. It's about Ben Affleck moving on with his life. Uh, th these movies were so terrible. And I think that started a riff. I don't think there's anything more terrible than the movie Geely. Right. Please. That's what oh. everybody told her. And she's like, you asked me to be in this. I'm more singer. He's like, you asked me to be in this. <laughs> you ruined my career. We Get just saw here. We just saw the movie Leprechaun for movie night for yeah. one of our live shows. That's a better movie Agreed. than Geely. In yeah. fact, it's a better spelling of any word. And Leprechaun is hard. Leprechaun's Geely, hard. Yeah. Oh, well, you're right. You're absolutely right. No, I do. Because, uh, yeah, maybe other shit's going on and you're just hiding it. But if those movies were hits, they would have lasted more than when the movie just came out. But it's they uh, were, they were called a joke. And I think uh, I think uh, one of them was a little embarrassed. I think it's just fun to be on set and people forget, you know, right? Like mostly there's there's not anything to do. You know, and then you have like spurts of uh, your art that you're doing together and you're being fed well and being treated well. And then there's like an office romance for like a minute and you can get carried away. But she's got to be keeping that uh, been having a torch for him the whole time, because fairly recently, last couple of days, it was in the news that uh, some woman having to be pretty young uh, saw the dating app Raya, where celebrities are. 
said, uh, hey, Ben Affleck. She and this one was a model that counts as celebrity. And she said, uh, uh, oh, you're 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 saying hi to me. You're Ben Affleck. I don't think you're Ben Affleck. And Ben Affleck sent a video and it was like, um, hey, Beth, it's me. And then she went, OK, that's weird, too. You don't know me. And then, uh, you know, posted that online uh, th- th- for Jennifer uh, Lopez to see that and not go, what the fuck was that? And just let it go. That means she misses him a lot. Was that a big deal? I don't think question- it's, a bi- it's not the biggest it's deal. It's just funny. I uh, what else can you do? I thought that was um, it's me reasonable. I get you. Maybe I'm just more hung up on the age differences. You know. Oh, yeah. Be hung up on that. That's fine. But okay, like, I don't you. know. Feels normal. Alex Rodriguez is uh, a little upset. You know, he's like, I, I thought maybe we'd uh, have a chance to get uh, back together. But Matt Damon is saying, I hope it's true. He goes, I love I love seeing her around my friend. Oh, he was asked on NBC's Today show while uh, he was promoting some movie. Uh, Matt Damon says there's not enough liquor in the world for you to get me to say something about that. And so then they just stare at him because he's kind of slow. I love them both. I hope it's true. That would be awesome. (laughs) Okay, good job, Matt. (laughs) (laughs) I guess they gave him enough liquor. Yeah. (laughs) Turns out there is. And uh, cheers. You didn't even drink the tequila yet. I'm just saying, I hope they're (laughs) <laughs> I hope they are. And I don't think I'm embarrassing myself. Let me put it that way. OK, uh, comedian John Mulaney. I'm a big fan. Uh, he he went into rehab not too long ago and uh, just got out and then announced that him and his uh, wife are getting a divorce. And then she the wife brought up uh, that I'm heartbroken that he's uh, dumping me right after rehab. I get that. That's tough, right? Like it had to be a real surprise then. Yeah, but we don't know what's going on. We don't. But still, you know, yeah, I'm heartbroken. And he's like, you're not making this fucking easier. Anyways, you know, I got my life together and she can't be in it anymore. That's all right. I want, you know, sometimes you go to rehab and you realize all of your decisions were wrong. He, He she knows better. She keeps trying to get him out of rehab. Like, I think you're good. Like, it's a 60 day program. It's not that long. No, no, no. Let's just get the fuck out of here. You're starting to do some soul searching. I would say give her time and she's going to be like, oh, he made sense. Somebody does some soul searching. You get the fuck out of there. You go like, stop it, because that's the beginning of the end. All right. (laughs) Uh, uh, Speaking about uh, quitting. Let me mention something. Lucy Nicotine. How about that? Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. This is what I'm talking about, an alternative that doesn't blow bowls. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine, comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, pomegranate. How about a lozenge, cherry ice flavor, four milligrams of nicotine as well. Every flavor, it actually tastes great. Some of these, you feel like you're just ripping tobacco off the ground and chewing it. This is uh, this is enjoyable to you and it'll help you switch over if you want. Get rid of that vape. Stop it. You look like an idiot, brother. Love throw out your dip. Get rid of your cigarettes. It's a pacifier. Stop it. Get some Lucy nicotine gum. Get some lozenges. Go to Lucy.co. Lucy.co. Use promo code KTG. Get 20 percent off all products on your first order. Lucy.co. Promo code so, KTG at checkout. Buy it as a gift for someone. You know, they smell. Yes. Uh, here's a disclaimer. This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. You know that uh, Lucy Be sure to use the promo code K A T G. OK. Here's some uh, big news. One of the uh, people that attacked the Capitol during the insurrection his name is Anthony Antonio. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, actually, excuse me. That's the uh, let's see. A- attorney for defendant Anthony Antonio. Yeah. OK, so that's the guy's name. The attorney said that, yes, he did storm the Capitol. OK, but his client has, quote, Foxitus. 
and quote Fox mania from watching six months of Fox News during the quarantine. <laughs> His client was, quote, believing what was being fed to him by Fox News and the president. I love this Fox mania. I know a lot of people who have that. Yeah, that's a thing. It's a disease. I don't think that gets you off on anything because well, you still did it. Some people have the disease of alcoholism, but you murder your wife. Even if you were mm. drunk, you still murdered your wife. Right. But you get a little bit of a break, you know, if you go to like Foxitis rehab or something like this. <laughs> well, that means that they would have to declare Fox some sort of cult. Right. Because otherwise, I, yeah, because you're saying they're brainwashing me. They're the ones who put this in my head. I'm right. following orders. Are you allowing these people to continue doing this? Uh, Fox News is saying they're actually going to have a fox go on the stand and explain that this is silly. They go, we, we put a fox on the stand. The judge is like, this is ridiculous. Exactly. Dismissed. They're like, well, something. All right. You ready for Keith's bummer news? Oh, mm. all right. No, that's just the theme song. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Bianca named it that. Of course, it's when I tell a story, uh, usually about a teacher, it seems. A 52 year old teacher was sentenced to 15 years in prison for secretly recording videos of students as they change clothes in his fashion design classroom at a Florida high school. Oh, barf. Ew. Am I wrong that 15 years is nothing for doing this? Because it's not it's not a spur of the, spur of the moment thing. It's not. I saw that it's buying cameras. Oh, it's putting the putting the cameras up. It's downloading the video. It's cropping them. It's editing them. It's replacing a camera when it fucks up. Oh, it, that, that's that's not that's that's thinking. What's what's that called? Premeditated. That's premeditated every single day. Of course, it's hard enough to catch a thief with your camera work. You're going to. Right. Wow. Mark William Ackett. Also must remain a registered sex offender for the rest of his life. Oh, great. Well, you know, tell the Better Business Bureau why you're at it. Well, you know. I think I think that's the more important part than the 15 years is that he doesn't uh, have access to children anymore. He can't work in a school. You hope not. But even when you saw those perverts on uh, to catch a predator. You know, it's like, oh, you want to you want to you wanna work at, at this company like, yeah. Hey, are not you the guy from I just Googled your name? You're from that. It's like, right. I get that shit all the time. No. Yeah, that'd be weird. OK, anyway, you're hired. Mm, no. That's a weird made up story that you just said. <laughs> just change your name. You're registered, though. You have to tell people. <sighs> I don't know if you have to tell people, then you have I to. I mean, the point is, is you it's against the law for you to be near children. I think that's a big deal. I don't think my school had the uh, had the technology to look up any uh, sexual predators on a computer. No, but it was you know? decades ago, Keith. Mm, I don't know. Did um, you did calendar? <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think we got to worry about the time and 15 years is not enough. I do think this should be murder when it's premeditated daily that you're taking videos of a 15 year olds changing their clothes. It's so gross, it's even hard to think about. Now I'm going to explain to you. Once a week, you go to a meeting in jail, in prison, and they explain to you why that's wrong. Mm. And then you have to pass the test and explain why it's wrong. What the fuck could you possibly write that you learned why it's wrong? Oh, no, there's no way you don't know that's wrong. Otherwise, you would have put the cameras in plain sight. That's, right. It's easy to figure it out. Are you tiptoeing in and out? You know, it's wrong. There's like, yeah. you know, signs. But I bet you still have to say something, you know, like, mm, I would rather it not done to me. So why would I do it to somebody else? I've learned. And it's very vulnerable and uh, it fucks with their heads. And Keith, people... are you a PR person for someone's apology tour? I, d I don't know what they could say. Maybe it's a trick. You can get out in 15 years. If you could explain what you learned and knowing you'll never be able to explain it, we keep you in. Hopefully that's what happens. His wife of nearly 30 years begged for leniency. Ugh. Now that's a gem of a wife. 
Yeah. Uh, no. Unless that's a trick, too. And she's like, no, let me punish him. It'll be worse. I heard you can make friends in jail. Oh, no, I'm done with you. Right? I'm not waiting two or 15 years for you. No, no. 324 counts of video voyeurism. It's a lot. I don't know what these numbers mean, but that's a lot. Uh, defense attorneys diagnosed him as having voyeuristic disorder. What? Yeah, it's a disorder that makes you uh, daily put up cameras, download them, crop them, edit them. Uh, let's see. Eva Appleby, a longtime Bloomingdale High School teacher, spoke of the shock and disbelief she felt when she learned she was the only adult in the videos. Oh, my fucking. Imagine that. Yeah, it's like, well, you look young. Oh, my God. His wife is asking for leniency. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're lucky people aren't stoning him to death. He was a girls track coach, also fashion no. design teacher as well. He collected, cropped and edited hundreds of nude and partially nude videos and photos of 125 victims changing in the fashion design class dressing room. So he probably kept going like, all right, let's see your new uh, your new outfits. And then they show him. OK, this is what I designed. All right. I took it all in. Believe me. Let's see another outfit. Go change again. Fuck. And you don't know where that video goes. It's of course not, not. Like his computer is Fort Knox. Right. Uh, several students said they struggle with depression and anxiety. Another went from becoming a standout on the girls track team to quitting completely. Fuck. One victim told the judge she spent her father's birthday sitting with investigators and identifying pictures of her naked body. Oh, my God. Is this year. Right. How about There's this? All the behind the scenes of it where yeah. you have to prove. Oh, no way. 15 years is enough. Oh, God. no way. Those who came to court to speak on behalf of Ackett. Who, by the way, I'll put his picture up. He, he looks like this. Uh, described him as a good neighbor, a good coach, a volunteer for his kids marching band, a trusted oh Sunday God, school teacher and a loving husband. My dad doesn't have friends. Uh, oh, this guy had people speak on his behalf. I understand why I'm here. But when he comes to the swap meets, we keep the change. He's a good guy. I wish I could go back and change what I did, he said, or I or do something to make amends. But I know that I can't. I feel especially ashamed of what I did because you treated me with such care. Some of you confided in me your fears and problems. Oh. And many of you consider my classroom a safe place to escape the problems that you face. Oh, my God. He's uh, he's one of these teachers you can talk to. Fuck. I will never forgive myself for turning something that should have been a fond memory for you into something that you would rather forget. I, I don't know if I'd be able to tolerate myself after 15 years. And just, he could say all that. And he was just caught and sentenced. And he can say all that. Right. Right now. He didn't even go to these classes I made up yet. <sighs> Prosecutor said Ackett was caught when a 17 year old student noticed a box on a shelf with a light coming from it as she changed clothes inside it. She found a cell phone that appeared that appeared to be recording. She told the school's principal who called the sheriff's office on a cell phone. The adult that was in these videos also said he's an excellent actor, having fooled us and his very own family for years, acting like he cared, like he respected us. But instead, we found that it was a big act. OK, oh then it's 16 God. years be an actor. He's the, I'm the best at it, believe me. So he still has a future. I've seen worse in Hollywood, you know. Wow. Death penalty. Why did you choose this story? And I'm not criticizing. I want to know your process. I know. Did you get it from the newspaper? Yes. OK. There were other stories in the newspaper. There were also bummer news. There's the, all the fun stories uh, I went over. Yeah. OK. Uh, and then it's like, all right, let's not do all gossip. Here's a. And then when I saw this heavy story, I thought, there's no way the whole world can not agree that 15 years is too young and we can have the death penalty. I, I, I know on certain cases I've been saying about the death penalty for what, 16 years now with Keith and the girl. Here's one. Here's when people understand what I'm saying. And you don't have to go to. Well, what if uh, sometimes even DNA evidence or this and that? Like, no, here's one. 
Here's one that he's admitting to. And we have all the proof and all the fingerprints and all the video. You see him fucking with the phone. You know, he's doing it. Can we agree now? Murder. Because you're saying this person will never be fit for this society. As we have it now. Correct. So I I was I came across it. Nice that we have a poll then. I'm not going to argue that, but I don't know. And and maybe this is me being a pussy, but I Mm -hmm. don't know if I can click the death penalty button, Mm -hmm. but I also can't click put him back in society. So what is someone like me? Is there a third option? Third option is I will let Keith pick (laughs) the death penalty button. Oh, oh shit. I can see why people don't want third options in a poll. (laughs) Oh, please. I'll, so I'll wear an executioner's option. mask and everything. I, I really would have no problem or nightmares. I know. It. Really? Wow. Yeah. OK, but you heard about me. I saw that. I'm not fucking around. OK. <laughs> that was sad. Was that also bummer news? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was also bummer news. For me. That was. Just... <laughs> I wonder what they thought. <laughs> it's not setting a good example for the sun. Maybe that was the main concern. Then what? What did you just do? <laughs> I realize why it was it came out like that, because you're trying not to be a monster, but you're also trying yeah. to like exclaim something. And so you're trying to not be like rated R or X, but like yeah. PG-13 didn't seem. And then you landed on PG because it just came out safe, Yeah, I assume. And that was just sad. And then th- then the follow up the you heard me. <laughs> that was me calling him a pussy. Like, you heard me. You could have stopped. You didn't. Oh, OK. I understand that you heard me. And then she goes, wow, what was that? And I said, happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you were very confused about this interaction. (laughs) All right. Well, good for you. Good for you. You shook a fist at someone today. Thank you. Uh, I'll leave you with a fun story so you don't go out on bummer news. OK, a Missouri woman. Right, that's fair not to trust me. A Missouri woman made a discovery while gardening in her backyard. She came across a live World War II era Japanese bomb. Still live. How do you how can you tell if it's live right away? What does that mean? No, it's not blinking. <laughs> <laughs> Five, four. I really <laughs> caught it at the end. Stop. Unplug. No, oh, you don't know. Which which and she's alive, of course. Pamela Coffey was clearing out a section where she'd been finding, quote, some really odd things she wrote on Facebook. But she was stunned to find the cylinder like object that a bomb squad ID'd as a World War II Japanese Navy uh, Navy mortar and later detonated. it. Now, I'd be dead. Do you know that I can't even I, I kick at least seven things a day that I don't know what I'm kicking easily. I'd be dead. How don't you see and go? I wonder what this is. You don't just kick something to find out. Why? How, how do you set it off? You kick, can that set it off? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, because it I would can't maybe... be good. I, I don't think the bomb squad squad came in and started kicking it. It needs five kicks, Bob. All right. Give me the good boot. <laughs> you ever see uh, the hurt locker and he has all that gear on? He just needs one solid boot. I'd be dead. I kick everything. I was mad at that biker because I'm like, I could have. So good for her. Isn't that a fun story? No. Told you. Keith and the girl dot com slash VIP. It's every show we ever uh, have ever done. It's uh, it's Kenda's new show. Free speaking. <laughs> uh, so take a look. And if you haven't checked out the app, uh, do it. Keith and the girl dot com slash app. APP uh, Harris on the go. Very, very convenient. Yeah. It, you know, you, you could just go to whatever app store you have on your phone and it'll be there under Keith and the girl. You'll see our faces. Yeah, I love it. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs>